Yeah. Okay. And yeah, this is kind of where I would get confused. Well, you're pretty good at these. I would expect you to do real well on this. Um, which function is linear? Um, the first one. Nope. First one's quadratic. Oh, uh, which function is linear? Um, I think that's B. Nope, that's exponential. C is oh, yeah. So it's exponential. B is linear. D is linear. I see that, yeah. E fits the form Y equal MX plus B. Yeah. So, so there's only one graph that's linear. Which one is that? The first one. Okay. So D is number one. Oops. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Second, let me. Now, see, when I'm working on a uh, screenshot, then I can write on here. So, oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. It's a little easier, and I have an eraser and everything else. All right, so that takes care of that one. Now, um, which one is the quadratic, and which which one does that have to be? Uh, I think the quadratic one is four. And what letter? Which function is it? A. Okay, so that has to be... Because that's the only parabola, right? Yeah. Okay. So these two are both exponential. Yeah. Now, if I have an exponential function that is y equals a number greater than 1, and I take it to the variable, that graphs like this. That's your okay. typical exponential graph. But yeah. If this 2 is a number between 0 and 1, in other words, if it's, uh oh, now it froze on my end. Oh, no, no, just unfroze. If it's 1 half to the x power, then it doesn't go lower left, upper right. It goes like this. Okay. Okay? So that's yeah. all we need to match these two. We don't actually... So to spot it perfectly, which one goes with number two, B or C? C. Correct. Um, the one that goes with number three has to be B, all because four is greater than one, and three-fourths is less than one. Cool, gotcha. Okay. All right, let me scroll down a little bit. We'll look at the next few. Tell whether the data represent a linear, an exponential, or a quadratic. Then write the function. Would this mean that I would have to graph that? And then yeah, identify from that? what they've taught you. First of all, let's put some values in here. Okay. There's a couple of tricks for doing this. And I'm not sure how they've taught you. Okay. Okay. So I have nothing but different values for X. If type of function. There used to be a clever technique here where you took the difference between them See what I did? Uh, Have they taught you this technique? No. Okay. Let's not use that technique. That usually is taught to 7th and 8th graders, that technique. That's the only time I've ever run into it. I never run into it with high schoolers. So let's just graph it. Let's see what happens if we graph it. 
Well, when X is, I'll put an approximate grid on it. So when X is minus 2, Y is 8. Plot that right. way. When X is minus 1, Y is 0. When X is 0, Y is minus 4. That point's on there. When X is 1, Y is still minus 4. When X is 2, Y is 0. And when X is 3, Y is back to 8. Well, right. that sure so, looks... It's not linear, right? There's no way I can put a straight line through all five of those points. It also is not exponential, because exponential either goes like this, or it goes like that. Whoops, not like that, like this. Always okay. approaching that line at the bottom. So, yeah. really, only one thing left. It's got to be quadratic. It's got to be parabolic. And can yeah. I put a parabola through those points? Yeah, I think I can. My drawing may not. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> well, poor penmanship. But you can see that I can put a parabola through those. Yeah. And that's probably how they want you to do it. So okay. the type of function is quadratic. Now we got to figure out what the function is. Well, The thing I can see the most is my x-intercepts. Yeah. Can I really see my vertex at this point? Not really, no. It'd well, be like... Oh, actually, maybe. I know that that point and that point, the vertex has to be halfway in between that. Yeah. So the vertex really has to be at an x-coordinate of one-half, but then yeah. I, can't, I can't really read that measurement. So I can't do it that way. There's easy ways to do this and hard ways to do it. I'm looking for the easiest way first. The one thing I know for sure are my x-intercepts. Okay? Okay. So there's a couple of different formats for quadratics. There's the vertex format, which is this. If I knew my vertex, I would have used that. But I really don't know my vertex. What I okay. do know are my x-intercepts. And there's the x-intercept format. Are you familiar with this one? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Might. You'd have to refresh me. But, yeah. Well, that's it. And I certainly know P and Q. P is minus 1. And Q is 2. There's Q, there's P. In other words, I'm looking for wherever Y is 0. Those are my x-intercepts. Oh, yeah, okay. So now I got Y equals some A that I don't know yet. But I know P is minus 1, which makes that X plus 1. And I know Q is 2, which makes that X minus 2. You with me so far? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, the only thing we're missing is A. If I can come up with A, I've solved the problem. Well, the only thing I need to do is plug in one of these points, and I'll come up with A. Eh, let's pick a nice, easy point to work with, that one. So okay. plug in minus 4 for Y and 0 for x. So what does that give us? It gives us minus 4 equals a times, when I put in 0 for x, that becomes 1, 
When I put in zero for x, that becomes minus two. Okay, so a becomes the, positive yeah. two. Now, gotcha. I, yeah, yeah, I get I that. My formula. Why? Yeah, that makes sense. Two is the a times x plus one times x minus two, and that's a perfectly legitimate answer to give. And in fact, it's probably the best answer, as opposed okay. to trying to figure out how to put it into vertex format. Because we don't yeah. really have a good starting spot for the vertex format. I don't know what that bottom point is. I could do some arithmetic and figure it out, but there's nothing wrong with x-intercept format. That That's just as good a format, depending on what it is you're looking at. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Well, Sully, I'm going to have to let you go for tonight. You only had, you only wanted a half hour tonight, right? Yeah. Okay. But that should give you a pretty good idea on how to approach these. Now, yeah, yeah. I get that. You want to do six, seven, and eight pretty much the same way. Now, if they're linear, then you're going to be using a different format. You're not going to be using quadratic. These are both quadratic formats. If it's linear, use y equal mx plus b to figure out what the equation is. If it's exponential, yeah. use y equal b to the x with a little a in front there like that. So this is the exponential format you want to use. This is the linear format you want to use. And either one of these you could use for the quadratic, depending on what point you can fine. I, I easily knew what P and Q were. Wasn't so easy to know what the vertex was. I could have calculated it, but I couldn't read it immediately. Right. Okay. So, I will let you go for tonight, and uh, feel free to schedule another session if, if you don't know how to do the rest of these, or it looks like you don't have any shortage of problems on this page. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry we didn't get to cover more than we did, but um, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, part of that was the technical issues that we had. Um, that maybe next time we can uh, cure those by sending it to me uh, ten minutes in advance. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, you've got my email stored in your uh, phone now. Yeah. Um, so I think the next appointment I'm going to be uh, doing is probably Thursday. I think it will work best for me. It's probably Tuesdays and Thursdays with half-hour appointments. So I'll figure out the exact time for that, but expect Thursday for okay. my next one. Sounds very good. So cool. Have okay. a good rest of your week, and I'll probably talk to you Thursday. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. See ya. Yeah, to close out of this, you just – Click on the X in the upper right hand of that go to meeting thing. Okay. All right. Talk to you later.